Are you at your island at the moment? I am. Yep. That goes. Yes. <laughs> so, what the? <laughs> there's so many bait. Oh, there's so much leather. How? How is this happening? <laughs> is that what that? Is that what that is over there? Yeah, it's, it's a. a cow, it's a. <laughs> yes. That's hilarious. I thought they were just literally. I thought you maybe built something in the sky directly above my island. <laughs> and that's someone what was left. <laughs> Look how much leather I have. It's the best thing. What is up, the world of the living? My name is Lex, and welcome back to Truly Bedrock. Friends, in the previous episode, we built. I can't even, I, can, I can't, I cannot, I cannot even talk about this thing without laughing. We've built a cow railgun that shoots cows at Daphne Lane's base. Uh, so that's a thing, that's a thing we did. And in this video I was willing to kind of turn it back from 11. But then I realized that this video is the 10th episode of Truly Bedrock, which is kind of a milestone and a pretty cool one and I would love to do something special like maybe do a quick retrospective on the on the whole season so far or something like that but at the same time I honestly need to get going with a lot of things around here on the island of the undead so tell you what we'll keep episode 11 as the special one uh, you can tell me what to do with it in the comments down below um, for episode 10 however I need to get going with you know the shipyard we've been planning I already ignored my building abilities uh, not abilities but I'm being building responsibilities for one episode and I wouldn't want to ignore them any longer. So, today we will be building um, just basically more of this. I actually already did some building off camera and that's how that shipwreck uh, came to be. Yeah, the harpoon is now harpooning an actual shipwreck back into the area. So, we will have to drop some uh, decorative ship parts over here. Maybe a crane uh, going from here and kind of, you know, moving those ship parts around. And you can tell I already almost uh, completed the giant sail that I wanted to lay down on a side of a shore. So yeah, there's a lot to do and there's a lot going on. So let's go on about it a tiny bit more. And if you feel that uh, there is a sense of urgency to my voice, well, that is because there really is a sense of urgency to what we're doing here. You see... The, the faster we figure this one out, the better, the faster um, Silent and I will have a place to live in. And yes, this uh, fort, fortress that I built in uh, like two videos before is already a livable space. It is, however, also criminally a mess and we need to kind of deal with it. You see, that's the problem really. The, this entire island is a mess. Uh, there's not even much space around it and yet still we figured out a way to basically spam it, spam it with things that we don't necessarily need or don't necessarily need to, you know, spam the island with. So what will be my solution? Well, I'm just gonna shuffle them around uh, just a tiny bit, move them here and there just like we moved the egg farm that I'm right now disassembling up into the sky to make a cow railgun. <laughs> that was a thing. So, what is it I am thinking? Well, you may notice that on the map of the island, this lower area, you know, where, where the sign is, where, where we stand, has no, like, planning parts to it, right? That is because I couldn't actually plan anything, because uh, this area in particular is spammed... Hi, Rogue. I'm busy. <laughs> it's spammed with random things that we still need to leave but also don't necessarily need to have in here, such as, you know, the storage system, the animal pens, the farm, I guess, the sugarcane farm also. All of this stuff is necessary, but shouldn't be here in the open. So I have a nice day of relocating it and trying to hide it in nearby buildings in front of me. And you know what? At first I wanted this particular storage system to go into that fort. 
But now I realize that there might be a much much more fun and better way of moving it around without me having to put all of it on my uh, back and you know try to drag it somewhere. Right? <laughs> I bet you guys forgot that this is even possible in Bedrock. <laughs> okay, 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 guys. I got a system. Check this out. Boom, boom. Click. <laughs> boom, boom. Click. <laughs> boom, boom. Click. I mean, when Silent heard about this thing, he, uh, he suggested we actually build a flying machine to push the entire system at once. And really, it would have been less of a mess than what I'm doing here, but... At the same time, I mean, come on, people, this is freaking hilarious. I love it. I mean, okay, there is an obvious flaw to this methodology, but still, though, you gotta admit, this is more fun than uh, breaking them all manually and uh, pulling, uh, managing the inventory manually. I mean, yeah, obviously, there is a fatal flaw to this methodology. But at the same time, you gotta admit, this is more fun than uh, managing all of this, these inventories manually, especially considering that my own inventory management is not the brightest. <laughs> uh, now, if only they also didn't break down into separate chests on the, in, in the process. Oh well. So the entirety of the storage system was moved and uh, yeah, it remained sorted because of course it did, why wouldn't it, right? Um, the only problem is that it is now mirrored and the other only problem is that the chests have been broken down Which not that big of a deal actually now as long as I can grab the chest from the Chest that I just broke I should be able to just place it in the same direction and filter stuff in by just rapidly shift clicking the one empty spot that I have in my Absolutely entirely clogged inventory uh, at the same time At the same time it is incredibly convenient and uh, Pretty tedious to be honest. I'm not looking forward to doing it like what however many times uh, it takes more now what I was talk wanted to, uh, to talk to you about before we do all that is Something else and that something else is well the building planning that I did in my brain for it you can see that this build, judging just from the cornerstones, was always supposed to be this, uh, like a house, this house that is uh, on the backside producing the uh, cloth, basically. Uh, the fletchery, yeah, the fletching thing. We'll be producing banners of all sorts and including giant banners that we will be using as sails. So that's a function, that's all right, that's, that still stays. What I wanted to make it is, I wanted to make it so that it's symmetrical, right? Like this segment correlates with this segment and this segment is the entrance. But now that we have the storage system in place, what hit me and I what, what I want really to do instead now is to take out these blocks and place them somewhere here. Opening this area, like mentally removing this wall that we also mentally placed here and playing it from here on out without it whatsoever. Now, why is that interesting? Well, because by this point we are extremely used from accessing our storage from uh, the outside of the buildings, not from the inside, uh, which is exactly why that storage system in the lower story of this house also doesn't really work, because to access it you would want to like na 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 door, take right, find the necessary chest, take stuff from it, that's a bit convoluted compared to just... Oh hey, there's chest there, open them. <laughs> it's way easier, obviously. So what I wanted to do is leave this door, leave, leave this entire wall open, maybe, maybe add a little bit of an overhang here, and just pretend that this storage section is an outside one, especially since you still can access it from the inside, so that works perfectly fine, right? Right. I don't know why I spent so much time explaining it. I honestly was more explaining it to myself than to you guys. Thankfully, I agree with myself. So, the two of us can finally move on and actually do something. Okay. 
quite a bit of a building session after um, this we um, I envisioned this building as a bit of lecture for sales and uh, it only makes sense that uh, it tries out designs and paints and colors on the uh, banners first, like on a smaller scale. Now, this wall with the wool, like the little sh workshop out here, uh, the paintery really, is uh, on the open up. I will not be enclosing it and I will not be doing anything else with this wall on the other side. I don't know, I just felt like having a wall, okay? <laughs> this On this area, we will figure out something else later. But for now, these colors, uh, they're supposed to be outside. The thing that I have keeping, been keeping in mind is that um, they produce wool in a way in this building and then they paint it out here, which is why you get uh, cauldrons with paint in them, not just water. And the idea is that that paint might be moderately toxic, so you would usually want uh, to work with it on the outside, on, on, the, uh, on the open air. Uh, it is also really immersive to kind of see the flags, uh, the banners, and the everything else, you know? Uh, and uh, as a result being like, oh yeah, there's, there's actually work being done. Ignore the fact that this storage system has nothing to do with the work that's being done, please. Please do, because, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, quite happy with this little corner. Quite sad that I have the entirety of the rest of the building to go. And really, this entire time I've been racking my brain back and forth trying to figure out on how to intricately make it look like this process is moderately automated in this weird quirky way that Minecraft has about, uh, uh, about its automation, really. I mean, seriously, if we can use chickens to launch cows at people, we should have some fun, at the very least make pretend way of making wool. I'm sorry, having hiccups. And at first I was like, okay, we're just gonna have a crate of sheep somewhere in there. But then I thought a bit, a, a bit more and realized who else, what else, what other creature in Minecraft produces wool out of itself? And then it hit me. Freaking spiders. Right? They drop string, okay? Which And they produce cobwebs. So, if we're living on this undead island and embracing this uh, weird voodoo juju kind of, you know, trickery of Minecraft Redstone, um, basically doing this in a bit of a redstone punk scenario where all like the other technology just does not exist. It makes all sorts of sense for us to be breeding up and attempting to farm spiders, just like sheep, for their string to then craft it up into wool. And it just so happens that Silent actually did own 10 blocks of cobwebs. Which I honestly have no idea how, where and how to place. <laughs> now, I did consider also putting a live spider somewhere in here. The problem is that uh, live spiders are, first of all, kind of tricky to lead because of their pathfinding system. Uh, not pathfinding, pathfinding system. And also because they're kind of suicidal. No, seriously, if you trap a spider in this game in a room, it will eventually find a way to kill itself. <sighs> it's just frustrating, if anything. Okay, just looking at it. I don't know guys, what'd you say? <laughs> I'm honestly quite happy with the way it turned out. Um, uh, you can really kind of tell that spiders live in the upper part of that building. And I have no idea why I'm gesturing towards you with my left hand. You are not seeing me, I don't have my webcam on. But, <laughs> I really really like the way it came out even though I would be way happier if I had a crate with a spider somewhere but that's another thing I really wanted to talk to you about is that with this project because of how many things ultimately hinge on Minecraft's mechanics I am a tiny bit getting afraid of using too many of the uh, animals as an excuse like too much Animal as an excuse trick, which I legitimately love doing in Minecraft, where uh, if I were to build like 
a Minecraft redstone punk ship, I would start it by building a giant squid that pulls it. And that's my problem, really, because I already have, like, a couple a couple things like that planned for this island. At least one more uh, idea of mine has to do with uh, giant Minecraft creatures, <laughs> which aren't in the game, really, not really. So, uh, yeah, do tell me what do you guys think, because I am... I like it, and... Uh, it, I feel it goes well with the general aesthetic of it. And also, I love it as a, a tiny bit of a way to implement some aliveness and workshopness to this general area. Uh, now, looking at this, at the banners being kind of died, at the wool actually coming down from the cobwebs, you get the sense that people are actually walking in here. It's just, it's, it's not just general, like, for, for no reason. It's not, it's not dead like this building is at the moment. Um, maybe some moving parts would be actually nice. Uh, maybe some redstone fight armor stands, that kind of stuff. But all of it, all of that would also imply that there are more people than just me in silent living in, around here. And that's just a, not a move that I'm ready to make just yet. So... So, so, once again, I want to see your suggestions, your ideas, and your thoughts down in the comment section. For now, that is gonna be it. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. This has been Zlodex Speed. This has been Truly Bedrock, episode 10. Next episode, I'll try to come up with some sort of retrospective on what has been going on on the server whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, to be continued. Have a good one. Bye-bye.